hear that lovely little bit of music? Because we are at Disneyland, and by we, I mean me, and a subscriber who's followed me for years, Matt, who hooked me up with some tickets to come and play with the Bobster. Bit and Halloween -y. Slightly betterly dressed than me. This is what we get, man hugs. Man hugs. <laughs> <laughs> and literally has hooked us up with tickets, otherwise we might not have even come here, which is really, really cool. So thank you very, very much. Absolutely, mate. Um, I'm going to put his little Instagram here, just go show him some love. Say, Matt, we believe in you. Kick some ass. Get in the gym. Kill it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what a thoroughly, thoroughly, what a thoroughly nice, just human gestury thing to do. Thank you very much, sir. So we're just about to go on Space Mountain. I haven't been on this since I was like eight. <laughs> Look at my arm across here. One of the most unenjoyable experiences of my life. Lady screaming the entire way around, going, I don't like it, I don't like it, I'm not doing it again, I'm done at Disney. And that's ride one. I cried. I actually <laughs> cried. A tear came out of my eye. Tears of joy. There are children on this ride. Lainey. Tiny little children. Tiny, 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 tiny little children doing this right, Lainey. They must be very brave like me. <laughs> now put your hands up high like you ain't coming down. Go on and touch the sky. Get your feet off the ground. Now put your hands up high like you ain't coming down. Go on and touch the sky. Get your feet off the ground. My final attempt to get the bolster on a proper ride. So we're on the Indiana Jones trip now. So at least, even if she bails after this, we've done two of the major ones at Disneyland. Hey, we did. We did Pirates of the Caribbean, that's one of the major I mean the scary ones. Oh, right. <laughs> it is your I survived the Indiana Jones trip. Laney though, also survived. Yeah, see, told you. I almost so opted out. You did, you nearly bailed. There was a lot, I think all the warnings on the walls were a bit disconcerting. Yep. Do not ride on this if you suffer from motion sickness. I was like, that's me. I was like, I was everything on the list. <laughs> so now, holy shit, there's a pirate ship coming. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is pretty awesome. So that was it, that's Lex and Laney's Disney day trip done. Listen to this, like the music playing over now. Dude, they played that in every city, there would be no bother anywhere ever. It just makes you happy inside. So anyway, that's it. It's another day in LA done. I'll see you in the next one. To the bit. So up it's birthday morning and I got woken up to... <laughs> Happy birthday to you! The flaming cake of doom! Plus, a lovely, dirty chai. Does it your birthday? <laughs> Make a wish. World peace, world peace, world peace. <laughs> no, it's way more selfish than that. The worst blow I ever. <laughs> for breakfast. Cake for breakfast. Well, do it. Go and do it. <laughs> it's good.
Super, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you do realise you're not a cartoon character. <laughs> so we've arrived, let's get in the, out of the date and into the and we are with a very familiar face if you have anything to do with fighting or any knowledge whatsoever. Come, Come this here. This man. <laughs> with Shane today and his lovely wife over there who thinks she's a cartoon character going to hide behind bags. She doesn't realise that she can't hover and hide her feet. <laughs> So we are here today, we're going to be filming a ton of tutorials, where's the light, there it is. There I filmed a ton of tutorials in this really cool kitted out gym. We have a heavy bag, we have the hitch you back in the face bag, <laughs> and we're going to be teaching you guys what? Well this is called a, a garage, right? Isn't that how you guys- A, a garage. A garage. <laughs> <laughs> never call it that, ever. <laughs> no, never go to England and go, can I see your gay garage? Can I see your gay garage? <laughs> What are we learning? This has gone downhill very quickly. We're doing some fight tips. We're doing garage. Uh, garage. That's what garage. it is. We're in the garage in the fight tips garage, the garage today. In the gay and, and we're gonna be doing uh, we're gonna do some heavy bag stuff, we're gonna hit some mitts, we're gonna hit the double M bag, or as Lex calls it, the hit you back, back in, in the, the face, face bag. Uh, it's gonna be fun. So first things first, you need to protect the little pinkies whenever you're doing this bag work. Now you can just buy some cheap pull-on ones and they're pretty okay just for messing around. Yeah, this is a better custom fit though. And yes. It's, and it's old school and it looks cooler. So Shane's now going to show us how you wrap your hands properly. Alright, so uh, right off the bat, there's a couple of different ways to do this. A lot of people usually put the loophole over the thumb. We're not going to do that. I like to layer up four, five, or six layers to make a knuckle pad because that's where the point of impact is. That's where we need the most cushion and support. We should have known this years ago. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, that is good. So I like it like this, yeah. See, now I've always been doing a lot of heavy bag work. I always end up getting knuckle pain on my center and outside knuckle from the left and straight right. A lot of people layer up the wrist a lot, which is important. You definitely want the wrist support, but if you think about the way a punch is thrown and where it lands, the point of impact is on the knuckles and then the weight transfers down to the rest of the hand. So I like adding most protection to the knuckles. Three times around the wrist, once around the thumb, back around the knuckles, and then we're gonna go in between each individual set of fingers. Big hands. Hopefully we got enough here. Now I might need to back up. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. But I do have this weird egg lump muscle going on there. <laughs> That's what it has no apparent purpose. Too much muscle. <laughs> Rewind. Well, if we can show this actually, it's better. Oh. So look, you can see we've gone, so we had the pad build up here. That was placed on, then one wrap over, comes then across, down the hand, and then you wrap around the wrists. Three times around the wrist. Yeah. And then you'll notice by the time it's done, we never go across the palm. So the palm will always be open. From here, I'm going to go to the thumb, just a little bit of thumb support. Yeah, it was bad when you catch your thumb. Oh, oh. it's the worst. Over, back around the wrist, over. Yeah, so always the X that we make, the X formation over the back of the hand, is always going to be on top, never on the bottom. So you'll see when we're done, the padding won't be blocking the palm. Because you want to be able to make a tight fist, and if there's too much padding on the palm, you won't be able to squeeze your hand fully. No. Cool, so now tight fist, and then this kind of is like your roll of quarters where you can bunch this up and grab a hold of that when you make a fist. Damn. <laughs> Feel pretty good? <laughs> never, yeah, never had it wrapped like that before, but that feels real nice. Real nice. Sweet. There we go, <laughs> but you can see that X on the back there, so we have, you can see how it's crossing over here, then we come in between the fingers and wrap around the wrists. There's the palm open, so you're gonna bunch that up, and that gives you that nice thing to create a good fist. So, that's how you wrap, now let's move on to the rest of um, this hand, and then the fighting stuff. So we're wrapped and now we're going to run through a routine to warm up and get ourselves limber and ready to rock and roll. You want to be doing this so that you can avoid popping shoulders, twinging muscles, especially if you're going from weights into this and you're just doing the bag work for kind of a cardio push. Pay attention. Yeah, don't want to pull any of these big muscles here. Useless big lump. <laughs> <laughs> Starting with the neck, looking up to the ceiling and down to the floor. Good, left and right. Chin What's your opinion on keeping your mouth open while you roll all the neck and stuff? 
I've heard I've heard rolling in 360 is bad, so yeah. I do up and down, left and right, and ear and shoulder. Okay. That's yeah. That are, makes more sense. Those are my three. All right, from here we'll work our way down to the shoulders, just rotating back, forward. From here, arm circles. This is a little bit of room. Stay in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> now from here we'll go bear hugs. All right, from here just go hands on the hips, hip rotations. This is gonna be a good one because all I've been doing for the last few weeks is literally weights. This is gonna show you why you shouldn't just bodybuild. <laughs> Calf raises, I like hitting the calves first before we go into the squats. Just for that range of motion, I've noticed you can get much deeper into the squat yeah. if the calves are warm. Jumping rope motion. Another thing I never really got to grips with, jumping rope. Jumping rope? Yeah, it's a very good one though, huh? Maybe we could do that today, too. <laughs> I'm gonna stop telling you what All I'm not good at. Yeah. All right, from here, we'll just go nice and low into a squat. From here, we'll go walking lunges, alternating sides. So this is what you'd be doing before you do any kind of... I usually do the same warm-up routine. routine. Yeah, just to make sure I hit each muscle group. If I'm not running, I'll jump rope. Um, but I like to do some form of cardio, get the sweat going, get the heart rate up. All right, now from here, we'll go into an actual boxer's bounce. So both feet are coming off the ground, forward and back, hands up. Let me just check your form here. <laughs> Looking good so far, brother. Stay still, and then when we throw our jab, I want you to step forward with the left foot and then bring it back. So think about timing. When that foot hits the ground, this is when this hand should make contact with the target. Okay. Full extension, I want to see that range of motion. You guys know about that ROM. And the whole idea here is if we're standing in front of each other, we're not going to be standing in punching range. Yeah. We're going to be standing just outside. And to get into that range, we have to step to close off the distance. And then you want to take that step back so that you're not there for my counter. Pick up the pace a little bit more. Put a little fire on it. All right, switch the stance, go to southpaw. Same thing. Equal sides. There we go. A little more awkward. The one thing I found is even standing, because ties vary this. Mm -hmm. Standing like a boxer hurts. Yeah, the bladed stance, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What Lex is talking about is like hips forward in, in Muay Thai. I remember uh, Johnson on the Wooden Man. Uh, <laughs> one of the best uh, ties to come to America and teach traditional Muay Thai. He said, your eyes should be facing your opponent and your balls should be facing your opponent. <laughs> so your hips are forward like this. Balls and eyes. Yeah, balls and balls eyes and on eyes. your target, right? Uh, and then... Learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> so you blade the stance. You pull that hip back. This hip is on, in yeah, the front. Yeah, really rotate this. If I stand like this, yeah. the face, the body, Everything's open for right down the pipe, but if I turn here, it's a much smaller target. Everything's blocked and yeah. targeted. All right, cool. Now let's work the cross. So stepping in on the jab, and then if you step six inches with the left foot, then you need to step six inches with the right foot. And the pivot happens. Everyone says you should pivot on the cross, and it's true, but I like doing it midair and then making contact on the ball of my foot. Because otherwise, I'll lean into it, and I don't want to lean. So you're stepping with that front, and then coming through, bang. Correct. Everything's in sync. Left hand, left foot. Right hand, right foot. Yeah. And really rotate the hips. Good. Exactly. So once you get to the end point, then step back with the right foot first, call this a drop step. So step back six inches and throw the right, mm -hmm. and then back into position with the left. Beautiful. Right foot goes back first. If you're throwing the right hand, yeah. drop step. Bang, bang. Good. Bang, bang. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, cool. Get gloves on and sit the heavy bag. This fun. <laughs> Handy hint number one for the day. We were talking about throwing punches and tight muscles, and a lot of us tend to waste energy because we're, we're tense when we throw our punches and we muscle them. But when you throw your jab, it should hit like a piston, meaning it should hit very hard, but it should be more so the mechanics of whipping a towel. You know, when you snap a towel at your friends, it should be nice and quick because that's going to be the loose muscles are not going to restrict you like it would if you throw like a robot. Whipping like a towel. So all those like super gay moments that you had in locker rooms with your friends, it was all just lead up to more manly stuff like how to throw a punch. <laughs> so not only are we learning things whilst we're here, but also being spoiled because Shane has kindly given me some of his brand spanking new fight tip style lace-ups. This is like the Chanel of the boxing <laughs> world, that lace. <laughs> so how would you wear these if you're on your own? So what I do is I'll tie it just like I, I did right here and then slide them on yeah. myself, or you can just grab the laces like this and they're not going anywhere. Oh, I'm still on that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Probably the next video, and we'll show you how to hold pads properly, how to run a few simple drills together. 
Yeah. But because it's a major one, if you start doing pad work, a lot of people get hurt because they don't know how to hold the pads properly. And um, then the power that you're putting into punches doesn't get transferred into the pad, it gets transferred into your joints and you end up popping things. So mm -hmm. heavy bag work now. And the next video, we're gonna show you some pad work, simple combinations to work in that work both on foot movement, body movement, but also help you transfer that power as it should be without getting hurt. Well said. Uh, has a now I'm not gonna be able to do anything with this. <laughs> Looks pretty good there. Why don't you freestyle for a minute? I'm gonna do some just kind of freestyle. Yeah, and then Shane's gonna see what I'm doing wrong, correct it. There's, there's probably gonna be a few things here that are gonna help you guys out because I'm gonna have some bad tendencies. As I said, I never kind of specialized in any one thing. I kind of learned everything all at once, which is okay at the time, but now we wanna get a little bit more specialized, a little bit safer, a little bit faster, a little bit better. Yes, sir. All right, so I just wanna see boxing from you, Lex. I wanna see uh, some tendencies, some patterns. I'm gonna go just for 30 seconds. Hit the heavy bag as if you're fighting someone. You're surrounded right now by your family, by your friends. Okay. That's your opponent. Ready? In Sorry. 10 seconds, the bell is going to ring. Footwork. So five seconds in, he's looking that way. I'm going to come here and just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you go, hey, what is that over there? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the classic street style. 101, there you go. Precisely. Video finished. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? 30 seconds, freestyle, begin. Ten seconds. Boys. And time. Good. Catch your breath. Very nice. Well, you would have been disqualified because I said just boxing. Oh, yeah. An elbow. Sorry. So, sneaky. DQ. Ref looking the other way. DQ. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. Very impressed with uh, the mechanics. Everything, the fundamentals looked correct. I like that after your right hand you stepped underneath and rolled and created an angle and had some sort of exit strategy because most of the times when people hit the heavy bag, they're doing it wrong. Yeah. I mean, if they're training for a fight, if people are just doing it for cardio, they're just looking to, to sweat and burn the muscles, then yeah, you can just stand there and throw a thousand punches. But what I like is finding your range, right? So we, the first thing that we did was talk about stepping in on the yeah. jab, right? Because I'm not going to walk into a fight and get into range because I'm going to get hit. So instead, I need to be outside of range, and then I have to have a strategy, a setup, a way to get on the inside. And I noticed you did that. You started, you led with the jab most of the time, yeah. which is nice, right? That's your range finder, that's your probe. You get to see how they react. When you're throwing a jab at me, am I someone who likes to parry? Yeah, am I someone slipping. who likes to slip? Do I pull? Do I try to just stay outside of range? The one thing I would like to see less of is leaning into your right hand. Yeah, I'm done and, for that. Yeah, and that's what we did with the beginning drill. If I step six inches with the left foot, or 12 inches, or one inch, that's what I have to do to make sure that my feet are underneath me. Bring that step there. Yeah, a lot of people tend to be lazy with the rear leg. They focus on getting in, and then their eyesight is close, their head is close, and they forget about this side of their body. They forget about the rear hip, yeah. the rear leg. But that's everything for generating the power. That's everything for balance because my both of my legs are underneath me. Yeah, I'm not balancing on one. It feels foot. super natural because I'm not used to stepping in with that. So I'm, I'm good with this. But then remember to bring that foot. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. feels weird. So when you're on the head back, imagine it's an opponent, and try not to just be and then not moving. Always be, and then either if, it, if it's just back a little bit, or just to the side, but you don't try and be constantly so that you're off balance. That's exactly. the main thing. Exactly. You get carried away. So it's that land, then just move and create the mechanics because I'm by no means slick, but I, as I just remember just to move, just do something. Let's give them a better visual. So let's give them some options. Let's say you hit me with a right hand. You throw a right hand, I'm going to catch it here. But let's say I counter that with a left hook. Lex is then gonna duck his head and bend his knees to get underneath, and he's gonna step out to his right side. You did this on the heavy bag, and now from here, boom, he's got that uh, option available. And that's the same thing that he was doing on the bag, was he went jab cross underneath, and then he followed up with the right hand, which is, which is perfect, just jab out, right? So I step in, I'm in range, I'm in the pocket, we're trading back and forth. If I just step back and throw a jab, it doesn't even have to hit, it doesn't even have to land, but it's just to get them to blink. Give them something to think about. And stop stop them from moving yes. forward again. I don't even always hit the back. The first 10, 30 seconds, I'll go. Right, yeah. maybe, maybe I'm not finding my range. Maybe he's got really good head movement, I can't catch him. And then I find a shot that I know is gonna land, and then I actually land. Yeah. But that shadow boxing is one of my favorites over the heavy bag. On the heavy bag, we tend to practice just the first half. 
Yeah. And then we hit here, and it's a lazy reaction. In shadow boxing, we have to throw A to B, but then B to A, we have to work on the retraction yeah. too. Because you don't get to admire the shot because it's not hitting anything. Yeah, yeah. That's why you always call it stock. You land it, don't admire it. Yeah, you, go, you like do. Because you do it, you hit, you go, boom, you go, oh. I so landed like, a yeah. shot. And then they're like, yeah, boom, 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 boom. Yep, yep. <laughs> and the same thing happens with slips too. Like you'll slip a punch and be like, whoa, I dodged that. <laughs> and then you get caught yeah. and you So impressive, you yeah, slip yeah, one yeah, exactly. out, do it all the time. It works! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's more to learn. Exactly. <laughs> Optional, but this is how I start every round with the double and bag. You ready? <laughs> Just to get used to getting hit in the face. It's going to happen because otherwise you're going to be too tentative. It's like, ah, oh, it wasn't so bad. So that's how I start off. And then the first thing you're going to do is stay close to the bag. T-Rex arms. You're not even going to get full extension. Just go jabs and crosses. <laughs> that was a bit of a header. That didn't, really check. That didn't count, does it? Right, in the face. That was the forehead again. <laughs> Let me... Let me do the honors. Right in the nose. I think I think the Lex fans will appreciate this. <laughs> oh, that was a jab right in the nose. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So staying close to the bag, jabs and crosses, ones and twos. So just, just beautiful. Find that rhythm. Notice how what angle you hit the bag is the way that the bag will then travel. Yeah. It also depends what knuckles you hit with or what part of the glove you hit it with. Now that you're comfortable with it, try to get full extension. You may have to inch yourself back a little bit. Try to keep it steady. Try to punch directly straight into the bag so that it comes straight back into you. Beautiful. Now you could just do this for an entire round. This could be three rounds of just straights. This is good cardio. Beautiful, beautiful. Bringing hands back to the face. Balanced in position, pivoting on the rear foot with the cross. All right, time. So now, we're gonna add in the hooks. So what we were doing, the bag was going this way. Yeah. Right? Now we're gonna add a left hook, which means it's gonna go this way. So straight punches, if it's coming right back into my hand, it's easy to hit. If I throw a left hook, I have to time it now to where I'm not doing this, or I'm not doing this. But then when it goes left and right, I gotta time it so I'm not doing this, or doing this. So what we're gonna do is jabs, crosses, and then when you're comfortable, you're gonna throw a left hook, and now it's going left and right. So instead of trying to catch it with a cross, we're just going to steady it with a back fist and make it go straight again. You made that look too easy. Now you can't back fist in boxing, but no. just for the sake of this drill, it's a good way to steady the back. So we're just punching out. There you go. Quick learner, Lex. And this is the kind of bag, too, if you just focus on power, it's going to hit you back. Yeah. You need to be accurate with your shots, and timing is everything. Beautiful. You got it. All right, time. So now we're going to put a little more mustard on the right hand, and then we need to steady that. We're going to steady it just with a helmet guard with the right. So it's we got the hook and the back fist, and then the right hand block right back into it. So do you see that there? So it's ones and twos. Uh -huh. Now I'm gonna do the hook and the back fist. Right back to the ones and twos. Now we're gonna do a powerful right hand to a right block. Okay. And you can mix it up. How many times you wanna throw, maybe double up on the hook. Right. Yes. Ooh. No, I wouldn't say so. There you go, that's it. Nice. That's good flow there, there you go. Ah. <laughs> there it is. And then with this, I mean, it's not limited to just hands. You can work the elbows, you can work the kicks, work head movements and angles and everything else. The head movement's a nice one, that slip and turn. Yeah. One of my yeah. favorite tools to use. You did good, man. Very good. Thank you. Right. <laughs> Straight, hook, back fist, power through, block with the elbow, back to it. Bang, 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 bang. This man's coming for my job. <laughs> Lately, I've been doing shit different. Cooking like a chef, I've been all up in the kitchen. Had to make a move, had to make a little distance. A lot of people tripping, they could never see the vision. Fuck that, tell them about